what's up everybody i hope you are enjoying your day hopefully you're having a stress-free day as most of you are well aware of this is financial aid season this is fast with season maybe css profile depending on your situation maybe a little bit of both and in this video i want to give you five reasons that are not common five reasons that are a little less obvious when it comes to reasons why you need to complete the financial aid forms because you never know what may come about so let's go ahead and jump right into it so reason number one is if you are family and you're looking to apply for scholarships from private donors you know basically institutions that are not the colleges that have scholarship funds a very good idea a lot of families do it but more and more private donors are requesting your financial aid information that you've submitted via the FAFSA and maybe even the CSS profile. And if nothing else, if you don't qualify for need-based financial aid, but you're looking to get money from some private donors, uh, private scholarship funds, it could be useful to complete the financial aid forms uh, via the FAFSA because the information that they're going to need or request. So not every scholarship or private scholarship donor is doing this, but it's becoming more popular, more common. And once again, if nothing else, this is a good reason for you to at least complete uh, the financial aid forms via the FAFSA and or the CSS profile. So reason number two, even families that make over 200,000, maybe over a quarter million dollars a year as a household and household income could still qualify for financial aid. Now, this is really important to understand, and I say this often, is that uh, the financial aid applications are not a pass or fail application. You kind of have to take in all the variables of not just your income, but also your assets, your family size, where your student is applying, where they're going to go to school. Now, don't get me wrong. One school, they may not qualify for much uh, financial aid on the need side, but at another school, same situation, they actually could. It really depends on the school as well as the situation and how the school is determining your uh, aid eligibility. But even if you make a lot of money, you're upper middle class or maybe even upper class, depending based on your income, you can still qualify for need based financial aid. And you should not rule out the possibility just based on what you think or what you may have heard. So reason number two, even if you make a lot of money, you still can qualify for financial aid. So it makes sense to complete the form. Number three. Another great reason to complete the financial aid forms, and even if you think your situation may be on the fence, you may qualify for need base or you may not, is that when you complete the financial aid forms, often you will qualify for favorable loans. And what I mean by favorable loans, and a lot of times people don't like the idea of taking borrowing money to pay for college or borrow money to pay for anything, but a student loan can sometimes be one of the better loans that you can take, one of the better debts to have. And if you can get a favorable loan, meaning it, it can be uh, the interest can be subsidized, this can be very helpful when it comes to uh, reducing your, you know, your interest payment and helping you attack the principal a lot sooner. Even if you are uh, considered to be affluent or a savvy investor, having a loan that you can leverage at a lower interest rate with the interest being uh, subsidized can give you a lot of opportunity to reinvest your money and your funds that you were going to use to pay for college in another way. It's a favorable loan treatment is the third reason why it's important to at least complete the financial aid forms. So reason number four, it's going to increase your odds of being accepted. Now, admissions committee and counselors know that if a student doesn't complete the FAFSA, they're less likely to enroll in their you know, particular campus. And they will be less inclined, I'll say, to sending an acceptance letter to a student who may not want to attend. So in other words, this is a great way to demonstrate interest. So this is really, really important and very crucial for you to understand. This can be a double whammy. So one, if you don't complete the forms, it definitely obviously decreases your chances of receiving money, financial aid and scholarships. Two, it also would decrease the chances of your student being accepted at a specific university. So definitely do that if nothing else. So last but definitely not least, number five. And this comes down to merit scholarships. Now, regardless if you feel like this is right or wrong, a lot of colleges uh, will basically decide whether or not to award your student a merit scholarship um, based on their 
FAFSA and or financial aid forms. Now, colleges can obviously tell when you submit the forms whether or not you're going to be a need-based candidate for financial aid. But when it comes to just overall enrollment, and if you're not a need-based candidate, this information will help a college decide whether or not they want to award you any kind of merit scholarships. And the reason being, and, and this is kind of a business decision when it comes to the colleges, is that if they see that you're not a need-based candidate, in other words, you're a full, you're a full pay family, and you check all the other boxes when it comes to academics, your students, you know, story and their ability to basically get accepted, they fit well on the campus. A college looks at it and says, well, if we get this kid, let's say $10,000 a year in exchange that they, you know, accept our, our offer and pay us, let's say forty or $50,000 a year. Now the colleges are making a lot more money by giving you a $10,000 scholarship on a renewable basis. And this information is only available to the colleges. They only know your situation when you complete the appropriate financial aid forms. So once again, this is not rather, uh, we're not you know, dictating whether this is a right thing to do or a wrong thing to do, but the reality is colleges will use your financial aid information even if you would never qualify for need-based financial aid to discern if you would be a good candidate for merit scholarships in addition to your students' specific merits. So they want more full pay families. They want families that don't really need a lot of help. And if they can you know, make a deal where they give you a discounted tuition or they give you a little bit of money as it you know, relates to a scholarship or some sort of uh, favorable financial aid, then it's a win-win you know, for the university as well as for you, the parent, sending your student to that specific campus. So hopefully this information was helpful. And um, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. We're making videos like this all the time to educate you in such a way where it prepares you for college to help you keep more money in your pocket. Like I always say, what you don't know can definitely cost you, and it usually does. If you have any questions or you need more clarification on anything that I mentioned in this video, do not hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at info at a grade above cp.com. My name is Josh Smith. Thanks for checking us out and be on the lookout for some more information to come. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.